I'm going to do another video for you on the Eternal Perspectives YouTube channel, a little different. Uh, this time, not just uh, me uh, recording the video, we have a, a special guest we're going to be talking to. Uh, I'll introduce him now, I guess. Probably uh, looks a little similar to myself. This is my brother, Gary. Hello. Glad to be here. So uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, there have been a number on uh, Jesus in India, karma, sort of an Eastern theme. So it's going to be um, <clears throat> playing off of that, but delving a little bit more into the Catholic Church and maybe how they uh, have an influence in that as well. So I guess just to start it off, um, a friend of mine had gone to a Christian meditation seminar here where I live uh, a couple years ago and he was all excited about it. He started talking to me about what he had uh, learned there. It was actually held at this Dominican Spirituality Center or the uh, Dominicans of the Catholic Church. Uh, the person who spoke there was a Comandalese monk named Father Cyprian Consiglio. And he'd been influenced by another Catholic uh, monk by the name of Betty Griffiths. Griffiths. But my friend was uh, telling me about this. Uh, he was basically stating, I guess, his uh, father, <coughs> Consiglio, was syncretizing teachings of Catholicism with Buddhism and Hinduism and other world religions. And he thought this was um, really neat. So I started doing some more research on uh, his father Consiglio and found a paper that he wrote titled The Ground We Share on Interreligious Dialogue and Universal Wisdom. Just, uh, just to read a couple excerpts that, of things he said in here, uh, he basically said that um, he started an ashram in um, California and he says that here in the paper he says that um, first a beautiful practice that is common in our ashram and others throughout India is reading of non-Christian sacred text at the beginning of the liturgy or just before the liturgy begins. And further down he goes on to say that not only are these scriptures better understood when placed in the context of the Bible, but perhaps the Bible too may be better understood when placed in context of the cosmic revelation and these seeds of the word, quote unquote, helping us to see our own tradition as an expression of a larger movement of the spirit in humanity. So it seems like he's syncretizing these other scriptures with um, Catholicism and that one can learn from the other. And uh, if you watch some of the other videos, you may also see people want to co-opt Jesus into uh, Hinduism and their beliefs and fold in some of the teachings of Jesus into Hinduism and they'll read the Bible and interpret verses and uh, interpret, they'll read reincarnation in the Bible and other Hindu doc doctrines that evangelical Christians uh, will disagree with. And, um, so this got me looking further into well, what does the Catholic Church really believe about people of other faiths? Are they actually saved? And then I started thinking about Myself, because uh, as you know, uh, I guess we grew up Catholic until uh, yeah. college, basically, and left, started going to a Baptist church. So what does a Catholic church say about us? And so I know you've done a bit of research, so that's kind of the things I wanted to right. yeah. to go over. And uh, I don't know if you wanted me to read a little bit from here, or you'll you you get that in there. To start off there. But, uh, so I went to the Catholic Answers website, so it's an apologetics organization, and somebody asked a question, is there really no salvation outside the Catholic Church? You know, they quote some different catechisms of the Catholic Church, and the number one response is a fairly lengthy response, but one of the responses says, quote, there is no salvation apart from Christ and his one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Again, this is an infallible teaching and not up for debate among Catholics. Uh, number two said that those who are invincibly ignorant concerning the truth of number one that I just read, that there's no salvation apart from Christ and His Holy Catholic Church, 
will not be culpable for this lack of knowledge before God. So I guess it really need to, we need to define what invincibly ignorant means, but they're basically saying that if you're really not aware of the teachings of the Catholic Church, then there's still hope that you can be saved even though you're not part of the mm -hmm. Catholic Church. But we'll go talk a little bit further about people like my brother and I who have willfully and knowingly left the church. What is our faith? fate according to this Catholic Answers response. Just to close it out, I guess the Betty Griffiths, I mean the Father Consiglio, his um, ashram that he started in Santa Cruz, California is titled Sangha Shantivanam, and interestingly that's named after a Catholic ashram that was founded in India about this uh, Catholic priest named Betty Griffiths. But if you go to Father Consiglio's website, he lists a number of the books that they read, and they run the gamut from the uh, Upanishads, Hindu, Hindu scriptures, the Dhammapada from Buddhism, uh, some Sufi texts, the Tao Te Ching from uh, uh, the Taoism, the Essential Quran, so it kind of runs a gamut. So he's reading from not just the uh, Bible, but from all these other scriptures. So. You know, as I mentioned, that he got the name of his ashram in Santa Cruz from one in India. I can't remember when that was founded, quite a number of years ago. But uh, if you see pictures of it, there's like a three-headed figure in this ashram in India that's supposed to represent the uh, trinity of Catholicism or Christianity. But they put that on there because uh, Hinduism, they have a trinity of gods that they worship, so they're trying to make it that compatible, that Hindus may be able to uh, see similarity and then say, see that, well, hey, uh, Christianity or Catholicism really is not that much different than what we believe, and they can get them to actually eventually become Catholics, I think is their, their plan. But uh, so that just brings up some questions. Well, how is Catholicism different than evangelical Protest Protestantism, like uh, Baptist or other denominations? And just uh, just want to talk about some of the differences. So yeah, I'll let you okay. talk about some of what you found. Yes, and I've kind of done some research. Like Gerald said, uh, we grew up Catholic, and in, in college we got involved with a non-Catholic uh, organization, and then started going to um, a Baptist church and. So I guess I um, did that for a while, and recently, maybe the past two years, I kind of started just to relook at Catholicism and, you know, thinking, hey, you know, what happened, say, those 20, 30 years ago? Uh, was there something that I missed or just wanted to go back and review uh, what the Catholic Church teaches and believes and to make sure... Uh, what I'd read back then and understood to be the case was still true. So I did do some more research and I think Gerald referenced the uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is referred to as the CCC. And it's kind of an all comprehensive, a large volume uh, book that really outlines the specific dogma and teachings of the Catholic Church. So it's kind of the authority, I would say, on what the Church believes. and. Uh, and I th although I think Vatican II met in the, I don't know if it was the 1950s, 60s, they kind of went in and readdressed and re-looked at some of the issues. And from what I could uh, gather, yeah, it, it's, it redefined certain things, but ultimately, as Gerald indicated, if you uh, were knowingly in the faith, which would be the Roman Catholic Church, and you knew the teachings of the church and left knowing that, then it seems like there is really no hope or eternal salvation for you. But it, but if say if you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or a, somebody who was not a part of the church growing up and you were ignorant, I can't remember the word that they invincibly, they, invincibly ignorant. That means that you just don't really know. Then it appears that there is hope or some hope for you to attain eternal salvation, which, you know, to me seems kind of odd. But that salvation ultimately goes back to being a member of the Catholic Church. Right, right. 
And then I did find that uh, in the CCC, you do read, I'll just go over some notes I had, that the Catholic Church, or the Roman Catholic Church specifically, because Catholic just means universal, so all believers are part of the Catholic Church, but the Roman Catholic Church like, sees itself as the really one and only true church that exists here on earth. And you have to be part of the Roman Catholic Church to uh, be able to uh, have eternal salvation. And the uh, sacrament of penance is actually a necessary part of salvation. And that's kind of a whole different topic, but uh, that, and that involves confession to a priest. And I'll go over, I guess, what are the differences between uh, Roman Catholicism and the Protestant Church. And I guess what comes to a lot of people's minds initially may be the uh, issue of Mary. And, you know, some people say, hey, well, they pray to Mary. And some Catholics will say, no, we don't really pray to Mary. And I think there's a a gray area in that respect because I think the church's official teaching is that they don't necessarily pray to Mary or Mary doesn't really answer prayer. Mary is an intercessor. She intercedes for us to God. But I've been in certain situations and growing up, you know, in our family as a young person, you know, I've seen how people actually pray to Mary as if mm -hmm. they think or believe Mary has the ability or the power to answer their prayer, which is, I guess, officially not the church's position, but that's really gotten skewed, I think, over the centuries. But the question still remains, does really Mary have the ability to intercede for us or not? And as an aside, I guess I'll mention, you know, I was thinking about that, and I was like, hmm, well, Mary would really have to be omniscient to be able to do that, because if there are people all over the world, as there are Catholics all over the world, and just say, for example, there are 10,000 people praying to Mary at the same time, some are praying audibly, but some are just praying uh, non-audibly or just uh, mentally thinking about their prayer. So Mary, one, has to be able to read people's minds. Two, she has to be able to discern all of these 10,000 prayers at the same time. So to me, I don't see how that is possible for the Bible as the, well, I think, the ultimate authority on what uh, the church should believe doesn't really uh, ascribe any of those abilities uh, to Mary. And actually the, the Bible says that we should take our cares and our prayers directly to God and instead of going through an intermediary. So the issue of Mary is kind of a hot button topic, I think, uh, between Protestants and Catholics. And it's called Mariology, but there's specifics regarding Mary that the Catholic Church believes and teaches and one has to do with the Immaculate Conception, and that means that Mary was born without sin. And I've, I've heard of the term Immaculate Conception. I always thought for years that that just meant the virgin birth, but that's not really what that means, that she was born without sin. And then they even go further and they say she was a perpetual virgin or that she remained sinless throughout her entire life. And the third thing that they believe, that she is a co-redemptrix with Christ, a co-redeemer. She plays a role along with Jesus in the re redemptive process of humanity. And none of these things, um, from what I can tell in reading in the Bible, is really based on uh, anything in Scripture. So that's one I think, major difference between the Catholics and Protestants. The second thing has to do with a term called purgatory. <coughs> As Protestants, we believe that absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. So when you die, if you're a believer or a Christian, you go to heaven. In the Catholic Church, they say that there is an intermediary or intermediate stage or state called purgatory where you go to, in a sense, pay off um, the penalty of un unconfessed um, mortal sin and the Catholic Church actually divides sin into two types of sin venial sins which are kind of lesser sins and then mortal sins which are more serious sin and that's where the whole idea of uh, 
the sacrament of confession or penance comes in for the only way that mortal sin can be absolved is you, you must confess your mortal, mortal sin to a priest who has the power and authority to absolve you of that sin. And if you don't confess your sin to a priest, then the mortal sin is not absolved. And from what I've read in the CCC, if you die with unconfessed mortal sin, then you are um, going to hell. You cannot go to heaven. So that's a serious issue. But yeah, I'd watched a video. I guess somebody was talking about that, and he um, tried to figure out, if calculating all the number of Catholics there are, mm -hmm. how often they would have to be going to see the priest to confess oh, right, their sins. Right. And he was like, "It's really." I don't think he said it was uh, inconceivable, or just didn't really seem feasible that that could be done. Or the priest would be have to be in confession. Oh, right. A lot longer. That brings up a good point, because I did an extensive study on the sacrament of penance and confession. And I guess one of the things, you know, some churches uh, only have to offer confession uh, one or two hours a week. Yeah, I think that's what he was folding yeah. that into. And some churches I read only offer a confession uh, as a, on, a, on an appointment basis only. And the thing is that, you know, the what is a mortal sin or how do you determine what is a mortal sin and what is a venial sin because mm -hmm. the Bible does not talk about that and it makes no distinction according to the Bible sin is sin there's no say venial sin and a lesser sin and then a greater sin and then the, the issue is that in the Catholic Church there was a study published in the Boston Globe on February of 2014 by this organization called the Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate, which is a nonprofit organization uh, tied to Georgetown University, which is a Catholic uh, institution or university. And they determined that only 2% of Catholics go regularly to confession, and 75% of them, excuse me, never go or go less than once a year. So basically the majority of Catholics aren't going to confession, so that means their mortal sins are not being absolved. And then the next question I ask, well, what is a mortal sin? And in the CCC, it even mentions that missing mass without a very good reason or an excuse is a mortal sin. So I know there are most Catholics don't make it to church every Sunday. So if I add all that up, the majority of Catholics are, have a load of mortal sin that is not being confessed, and if they were to die, according to the church's own teaching, they are going to, not going to heaven when they die. So it's a serious uh, issue, I think, that the church needs to address, especially since the Bible says we can confess our sin directly to God, and He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it is not a necessity to confess our sin to a, a another person, but we should confess mm -hmm. our sin to God. Yeah, when you're just talking about the purgatory, just sort of made me think about um, Hindu Hinduism and uh, that whole cycle of samsara and being reborn. Mm -hmm. It's maybe not exactly the same, but once people die, they go to certain heavens or hells depending on their karma. Mm -hmm. So you gotta work this right. stuff off and they're going to be reborn so it seems like it has a hint of this similar understanding as this purgatory this right. intermediate yeah. state but this is not having to be reborn and come back mm -hmm. but yeah according to the catholic teaching you're still i guess quote unquote saved you just have to work off this i guess debt of mortal sin and nobody knows you know how long that's going to take mm -hmm. before you can you know get out of purgatory but then that brings up a third issue, which is differences between Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, and the Protestant Church has to do with indulgences. And an indulgence, indulgence is like something you can pay for to help speed a person's time that they spend in purgatory. It would be lighting up a candle and maybe saying a prayer or a mass for a person that has died. And this is, I guess, what uh, upset Martin Luther so much and mm -hmm. was one yeah. of the major uh, the imp thing, the impetus for the Protestant Reformation 
because the Roman Catholic Church uh, was abusing the uh, issue of indulgences and selling indulgences, indulgences to make money. And again, there is really nothing in Scripture that references uh, indulgences mm -hmm. and or purgatory. I think the Catholic Church gets their idea of purgatory from a book in the Apocrypha, which is not a standard book in the Protestant Bible. It's like it's in the Book of Maccabees, but it, it's really a non-definitive um, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> verse or scripture. Really doesn't, I guess, to me, uh, talk about a place of purgatory. It's something that was kind of read in to the meaning of that. Uh, the fourth issue, I guess, which to me is maybe even more major issue, has to do with the topic of what's called transubstantiation. And I guess the, the Protestant church believes that uh, when we celebrate the Eucharist with the bread and the wine, that it's symbolic. You know, when Jesus was uh, talking to his disciples in the upper room, saying, this is my body, this is my blood, it was symbolic. Mm -hmm. And as Protestants, that's what uh, they believe. But the Catholic Church says that uh, the whole purpose of the Mass is to focus on the uh, issue of transubstantiation. That when the priest prays over the elements, they call it the bread and the wine, they actually change into the actual body and the actual blood of Christ. It's not just symbolic. So that's called transubstantiation. So they're actually eating the body of Christ and drinking the body of, of uh, the blood of Christ. So that is a huge difference. I remember when we were altar boys growing up, we had a, uh, I forgot, I guess it was a round golden mm -hmm. implement plate. with a handle, oh, yeah. and when per the person would come up to get the uh, the host, we'd have to put it under their chin so the thing wouldn't it wouldn't it fall on the floor right, and right. kind of get defiled. So that's how seriously mm -hmm. they take this transubstantiation document right. doctrine. So that's a you know a, a big difference between the uh, Roman Catholic Church and Protestantism, and I guess maybe even more um, important topic has to do with justification and salvation. As Protestants, we believe that one is saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. And But the Roman Catholic Church uh, believes that you're saved by grace through faith, but also works. So it's, it's also dependent on what you do. <clears throat> so that's a, a huge difference because, one, how, how do you know what it is that you need to do? How do you know if you've done enough? Mm -hmm. So really, I think... They say when you die, you really don't know if you're going to heaven, because how you know you can't really gauge you know if your good works have been enough, and so that's a huge uh, difference between the uh, the two church two uh, churches. And so to kind of sum up everything, and what is I guess the issue or the problem, and I guess it has to do with according to the Protestant Church, we say Jesus is enough where the Catholic Church, in essence, is saying that Jesus is not enough. Because there is, we say Jesus is enough, but the Catholic Church says, well, you can also have Mary. So Jesus is really not enough. You can also add something to Jesus. You know, in the, in the Protestant Church, we say Jesus, he paid the price for us in our sins, and we go directly to heaven. With purgatory, the Catholic Church is really saying Jesus' payment and suffering is not enough mm -hmm. because there is something we, we have to do. We have to pay the penalty in purgatory or people can pay indulgences. Um, and the Protestants, oh, go ahead. No, I think maybe I've heard it said that it's summed up as this Jesus plus tradition. Right. I guess right. what's been established over the centuries with mm -hmm. the church is added oh, right, right. into there as well, like you're saying. Yeah, because the Protestant Church believes in sola scriptura. That's our ultimate uh, authority where the Catholic Church has the, the Bible plus tradition. And the tradition holds at almost an equal mm -hmm. level of authority as the Bible. But on transubstantiation, Protestants, we say Jesus' sacrifice on the cross on Calvary was enough. We don't need mm -hmm. anything else. But in the Catholic Church, the Eucharist, or the celebration of the Mass, is, 
is as if Jesus is dying on the cross every time that they celebrate Mass over and over again. So it's, it's in essence saying that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross wasn't enough. And justification by grace through faith alone, as Protestants believe, we say that's enough. But if the Catholics add the works, so they're mm -hmm. saying that faith, in essence, is not enough. So it's, um, it's, it's a. Some people may not realize it and say it's it's not a big deal. But if you think about it, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge deal and a huge difference. So. Um, that's, yeah. So maybe that's a good segue. I will just read the ending of this uh, Catholic Answers website, their answer to the question about, you know, those, um, the question was, is there really no salvation outside the Catholic Church? So this is what it says about people like my brother and I, or maybe some of you who were in the Catholic Church and willfully left. This is a response. I'll read word for word, so the it says some final questions. So what about Catholics who have left the faith? Are they okay or are they lost? It goes on to say, quote, anyone who knowingly and deliberately rejects the church will be lost, as I said above. So it would be the height of presumption to say that someone who has left the faith is okay. Now, it may well be that a person who left the faith may have had such a distorted notion of what the church truly is and what she teaches that there may not be culpability. And again, we don't know. However, it may well be that, the, that they are culpable. No amount of church attendance or prayer apart from the church Jesus established, the Catholic Church, will get them to heaven if that is the case. He goes on to say, so we must take extremely, extremely serious anyone who has left the faith or anyone who is not in union with the church because objectively speaking, barring this term again, invincible ignorance, souls are on the line. So that seems fairly clear mm -hmm. right. about what their position is and if you're not a member of the church. So I think as Gary said, I mean, this isn't some light issue. Oh, these are just disagreements. It doesn't matter where, you know, they're stating that you know, if you willfully and knowingly rejected the Catholic Church, well, you're lost. So mm -hmm. that's really serious. That's a serious claim that I think people need to think, take seriously right, and yeah. really examine for themselves. We're just trying to look at what the differences are and yeah, I say we are not, people. Yeah, trying to. We're not here to bash Catholics and you know, but just present you with the reality or the truth what what the Church says and and it's in the CCC or there. Their doctrine and documents and how they differ and I guess it is an important issue for people like Gerald and I because you know we were in the church like he said Catholic Church and we were altar boys growing up we went through confirmation uh, CCC or catechism and we chose to leave for you know whatever reason or not and went over to Protestant uh, churches and you know for a Catholic Church to say that if a person does that, then they're pretty much uh, lost, mm -hmm. and that has serious implications for, for people like us. And, yeah. Okay, anything else? Or? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, well, thanks for watching the video, and we'll be, uh, I'll be posting others in the future.